Okay, let's take a look at this uh, study guide that I gave you. And what I'll do is I'll go through here and work through one problem from each of each type. Now, first of all, we've got these exponential functions. And what we want to do is find the uh, y-intercept, the horizontal asymptote, and then show a graph. Now, first of all, for the y-intercept, that's always found by letting x be 0. So in this case right here, you're just going to replace the x with a 0, like this, and then add the 3. So 2 to the 0 is 1. So 1 plus 3, that's 4. So we get our y-intercept of 0, 4. Now normally, this makes sense because normally our y-intercept is 0, 1, and we have a vertical shift right there, 3. Now, that's also the horizontal asymptote because the horizontal asymptote is normally 0, y equals 0. But we've been shifted up 3, so it's y equals 3. Now, as far as the graph goes, the graph, we have two choices for a graph. We can have an increasing graph like this, or we can have a decreasing graph like this. What makes it an increasing versus a decreasing is the, the fact that the base, this 2 here, this 2 right here, that's bigger than 1. Versus over here, for this one, we've got a base of 1 half. This is a decreasing graph. This right here would be an increasing. So here's the way we uh, go about graphing this. Just make the asymptote here. I'll just make it here. At, I'll call that y equals 3. And then just make the graph go up like this. This right here would be the y-intercept. Yeah. So we do each one of these that way. Now, it says find the domain. Remember, with the domain of a log function, you're concerned with uh, the log can't, you can't take the log of a negative number. So normally, if we just had log x, we would say, well, x has got to be greater than zero. Well, there's some shifts going on here. See, we've got 3x minus 1. So what, what we have to do is say, well, I want 3x minus 1 to be greater than zero. So to find the domain, you just take what's ever in the log and solve it, and you get x greater than one-third in this case. So the domain would be one-third, not including, to infinity. That would be the domain. Now, evaluate each log. Well, let's look at this. This, is a lo this first one is a log base four, and this is saying, this one right here is saying, 4 to what power is 16? This one over here is saying 3 to what power is 81? This is saying 10 to what power is 1 over 100? In other words, 10 to the negative 2. So let's, let's see what this is. 4 to what power is 16? Well, that would be 2. 4 squared is 16. Now I want to jump over here to C. And look at that, because what we've got here is we've got log base 10 of 1 over 100. In other words, this is log of base 10 of 10 to the negative 2. So that's a hint for that one. Okay. Now it says convert to exponential form. So here's what we do. Remember, uh, log base 2 and e to the... Uh, so these, e to the x and log base 2 of x, these are inverse functions. And if you take the, make the composite of an inverse function, if you take a function, com, uh, make a composite with its inverse, you just get the, um, look, if you do this, let me just, I'm, okay, if you do this, you just get x. So when you apply the inverse function to both sides, what happens is the inverse function, like in this case, 2 to the x and log base 2 of x, they kind of get rid of each other and you're just left with x. Now, one of the... So you're applying log base... Or you're applying 2 to the x to both sides. But here's the way you think about that. 
you can think of it this way. Just take the base. Just take the base of this log and move it to the other side and make it a base of an exponent. You can, you know, kind of think of it that way. And that just leaves an X on this side. See, when you take away that base, all you're left with is what's inside the log. Now you do the same thing for to convert to logarithm form. So I'm taking this base of three and make it a base, log base three on the other side, and then that just leaves an X on this side. Okay? Now, expand completely. So remember when we talk about ex, uh, using properties of logs, we've got these properties. We've got log u plus log v, and let's make this the base a, equals log base a of uv, and we've got the subtraction. Okay, this would be convert to division. And then we've also got this one where we have log base a of u to the r. We can think about the bringing the r to the front. Okay, so we'll use that on these. Now, I, I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll do part C here. It's a complicated one. So here's what we've got. First thing I want to do, I take this log, and I've got A to the fourth plus log B to the ninth. Now, what's on the bottom? Well, that's got to have a negative in front of it. So if it's on the bottom, it's going to have a negative in front of it. That's the way you can think about it. Okay, so, so notice, everything that was on top, I have a, it's positive. Everything that's on bottom, that log has a negative in front. But wait, we're not finished. I got to bring these exponents out front. Okay, there's that. Bring that 9 out front. And then the 2 for the log C, and then the 8 for the log D. There we go. And we have um, expanded those. Okay, now let's look down here at going the other way, combining these logs. And uh, so I, I guess I'll do B here. Now, first thing I want to do, I want to take care of the exponents. So this is X to the fourth minus log y to the third, minus log z to the fourth. Now, I want to combine them on one log. Anything that's negative, I'm going to put on the bottom. So this is going to be y cubed, z to the fourth. Okay, those both have negatives in front. The x is positive, so it goes up top. Yeah, there it goes. Now, the next one, we want to do a change of base. I want to change each one of these to log base 3. Now, remember, if you've got log base A of, let's say, U, you can make that as log base B. You know, just write it that way. But there's one thing. You've got to divide by log base B of A. In other words, I want to change log base A to log base B. Well, just just write it, change the A to a B, but divide by the log base B of whatever the previous base was. So for example, for this one, I want to change to log base 3. So here I go, log base 3 of 5. Okay? Ah, but the last step, log base 3 of 2. There it goes. Okay, now number 9, we're solving for X. So here I go. Now, um, I'm going to do this middle one here. And I want to work this a couple of different ways. One, I'm going to isolate the exponential part. So this is uh, five, X, 5 to the x plus 1 equals 9. I just added a 3 to both sides is what I did. Now I'm going to apply natural log to both sides. And bring that x plus 1 out front. That's the reason I applied the log. Then divide by the log of 5, and I get log 9 over log 5. And the last step, I just subtract 1 from both sides. 
there, and I'm done. Now, another way you could do this, you could just from here, you could just say, well, I'm going to apply log base 5 to both sides. And that immediately just gives you this. See? There's none of this bringing the x plus 1 around front because the log base 5 and that 5 get rid of each other. And I just have x equals log base 5, 9 minus 1. And these are the same. If you use the change of base formula on this one, uh, on this one right here, you would get this one, okay, if you changed it to base E. Okay, we'll move along. Now, uh, we want to uh, solve these log equations. Remember, you combine, you convert, and you solve. So here I go, I'm combining. X over two equals one. Then I convert. and then multiply by 2. Yeah, like that. Now, I want to do another one down here. I want to do D. So here I go. I'm going to combine. Convert. Ah, here we go. So here's x. x plus 6 equals 2 to the 4th power is 16. See, this is 2 to the 4th power. Now, whenever, this is not a linear equation. This is a quadratic, so we've got to get everything on the same side. And then we solve it. We have a choice. We can solve by the quadratic formula, which that'll work, or we can solve by factoring, if it will factor. Let's see if it will factor. So I, I'm thinking it will. Let's see here. We've got x. I need two things that multiply to give me negative 16 and add to give me 6. Well, maybe an 8 and a minus 2. I think that'll do it. Yeah, that'll work. So in this case, we get the solution to be x equals 2 or x equals negative 8. Now, that's the solution to this quadratic equation. This quadratic equation has the solution of 2 and negative 8. However... Remember, you can't take the log of a negative number. So that rules out the uh, negative 8. See? So our only solution is 2. So at the end, you just have to test your work. Okay. Now it says find a particular model for the general model, y equals y naught e to the kt. Okay, so, so let's see how that goes. Now, first of all, We've got when t, we'll look at this one. When t is 0, y is 100. So that means that we got 100, y not, e to the 0, k. Now, e to, the, e to the 0 is just going 1. So what you've got here is you've got y to the 0 equals 100. So this gives you an updated model, 100 e to the kt. Now, all we got to do is find k, and we use this part to find k. And here's the way we do it. We've got uh, 110. I put that in for y. And in for t, I put 3. And then I solve this, so I divide both sides by 100. And that is 1.1 over here on the left. See, I just divided both sides by 100. 110 divided by 100 is 1.1. Now I natural log both sides. And divide by 3, and I get log 1.1 divide it by 3. And when you do that, of course, you summon the power of calculon, the TI-84, and what you get is you get your value for K, and your value for K here is going to be 0 0.0318. I just round it. You know, I just did four decimals, round it up. 
And so now you get your model. Your new general model is going to be this. Y equals, notice 100, E to the point zero three one eight T. That's your model right there. Now, you can use this, this approach to uh, solve some word problems. For example, suppose that 100 grams of uh, this made-up radioactive substance, honey badgerism, decays to 80 grams in 30 years. Okay, how long until there are only 20 grams? Ah, well, here's what we do. We start off with our model. Y equals, why not, E to the KT. Now, uh, it says that the original amount is 100 grams. So, so we can just put that in real quick. But it decays to 80 grams in 30 years. So here's what we have to find K. We have 80 equals 100 E to the 30 K. Now I divide by 100 and I get 0.8 equals E to the 30 K. See, I'm trying to find K. I log both sides and divide by 30. And that's my K. And what you do is you punch that in your calculator. So here I go, I got log of 0.8 divided by 30. And that will give me negative 0 0.0074. Seven. Uh, let, me, let me go ahead and make it 75. Okay. Just did a little bit of rounding. Now I've got a model. Here's my model right here. I've got 100 E to the negative 0 0.0075T. Now, of course, the K is negative because we're going from 100 grams to 80 grams. In other words, it's a decay. Now, it says, well, how long until there are only 20 grams? Well, set up your equation. So here I go. I got 20 grams. I set that equal to the model. And I just need to solve for T. So, so what I'm going to do is divide by 100 and get 0.2. And here's what I got. Now I'm going to log both sides. And now that's an easy equation to solve. Just divide by negative 0 0.0075. So here I go. Uh, T is equal to log 0.2 divided by negative 0 0.0075. And let's see what that is. We've got um, log of 0.2 divided by negative 0 0.0075. I'm punching it in here. And we get 214.5 years, 0.6, let's call it. 214.6 years. Yeah, there you go. And that's the procedure right there. Oh, that's all of it.